Hey guys! Well today I'm going to be turning some crowned rollers. This is for a one inch belt sander. I had a request to turn some of these rollers and so I thought this was a pretty good drawing to show you how to draw this up in Fusion 360. Uh, you can see we have the crown here. It's a slight two degree angle on either side. Uh, then we have this raised edge on the ends to kind of keep the belt in place should it try to track off. And of course we have a couple of pockets for some 26 millimeter by 8 millimeter deep bearings on each side. So let's take a look and see how this is drawn up. So first we want to create a sketch and we're going to be turning these on the lathe so it's good to get it oriented in the proper direction so our z-axis is going vertical here so we want to select this bottom plane then we want to hit the letter C for circle and the outer diameter is 35 millimeters I'm using millimeters here because uh, the bearings are 26 millimeters and I don't want to have to do any conversion so it's easier just to stay with metric. Uh, we're going to draw another circle 20 millimeters this will be our internal bore diameter and another that is 33 millimeters this will be our edge for our outside edge and then one more for our bearing pocket which is 26 millimeters all right a little confusing there but um, that should be all the sketches we need so we can close this hit stop sketch okay so next we want to go modify press pull that's one way of getting there or you can simply right click here and hit press pull so we want to take this main diameter select it and this inner ring here the roller is 30 millimeters uh, 2 millimeters for the lip and 26 for the length so we're going to type in half of that 13 I'm not sure why Fusion 360 does this, but every time you do a press pull, you have to go back and turn your sketch on. I don't know if it's just a setting that I have set up wrong, or if that's just a glitch in Fusion 360. So we want to right click this area here, hit press pull. We want to select this area and this area. We want to go this direction, minus 2.0 millimeters. Then we want to right click again here, press pull this area, and we want to go in four millimeters. Now that created our bearing pocket there. Uh, we can turn our sketch off so you can kind of see how it's taking shape there. Next we want to create a raised area here. So we want to go to create, excuse me, modify, draft. We want to select this plane here and this space. And we want two degrees. Wrong way. So how about negative two degrees? There we go. that's it kind of see how it's taking shape there uh, and one last thing is we want to put a chamfer or you can put a fillet either one we want to just knock these corners off slightly um, let's try 0.2 millimeters now uh, we can go a little more Now 
that should be good 0.4 millimeters click OK and then we have half of it but now we need to multiply that and do a mirror so we want to go to create mirror we want to left click and drag across the whole area selecting those 12 objects then we want for our mirror plane we want to select this back plane here and then it'll kind of let you know before you hit OK how it's going to look and I know you're gonna say this is not right that's correct but we're gonna click OK anyways now you notice we created two bodies but we're gonna to go to that second one we created we're gonna right click we're going to move and we're gonna move this 26 millimeters click OK and now we have our roller now there's one last step we need to do otherwise when we go to do our cam functions it's going to present a problem uh, one of the cam operations when we do one side the front side we're going to do this bearing pocket and then we're going to go all the way through that center bore so that it's true with this front bearing pocket and you see this line right here we still have two pieces and we need to make it one piece so what we need to do is we need to go to modify there we go combined and we want to select both the target body and the tool body we want to make sure it says join and we want to click OK and now you can see that line right there disappeared and we only have one body Now that's pretty much it. All right, so now we'll go back to my original drawing here and let's look at some of the cam operations that we used. All right, so let's go to our original drawing and here are some of the cam operations I used to turn this piece. Uh, as you can see, there's three setups here. Uh, we have the front setup. All right, so the stock that I'm using is inch and a half diameter tube, and it is three quarter inch diameter in the middle. Uh, and we'll be doing some internal boring to get this to 20 millimeters. There's a little bit of stock on each end. So the first operation is just to turned around here do a facing operation and then we're going to do an internal profiling to get our 26 millimeter pocket as well as turn this internal diameter to 20 millimeters so let's see if we can simulate that and I'll show you real quick what that's going to look like Okay, you can see we got a double finishing pass there. Uh, I repeat the finishing pass just to make sure that uh, the correct diameter on the bearing surface. Our next operation is pretty much the same thing. We're going to be removing it and repositioning it in the three jaw chuck to do another facing operation. And then internal boring now this second operation we're not going to do the internal boring here we're simply doing the bearing pocket and then the third and final profile is to get the OD turning for the OD turning I'm going to be sliding the pulley onto a mandrel this will keep everything true while we do the last operation which is the OD turning uh, you can see the tool I'm using here is just a, a v-shaped this is the same tool I used for my belt drive pulleys and 
And then we come back and do two grooving operations just to square this corner up. If not, it would have a slight taper here on the corner. So I just wanted to use the grooving tool there to uh, square that up. So now you can see how we have modeled the crown roller and proceeded to do the cam operations. All right, so now you can see how we've modeled up our crown roller and did the cam processes for this. So now let's go out to the G0602 and we'll run a few of these. So thanks for watching the video. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.